So we all know that EV batteries and EV cars never set on fire. They're a lot safer than petrols. They're like, I don't know, is it a hundred times less likely to set fire than a petrol? Avoid unattended charging. Try not to charge vehicles when no one is around to spot a problem. When are cheap EV tariffs? When there's somebody around to spot a problem or when all your family are in bed asleep, fast asleep, in the landing nod, no idea what's going on. Next thing, they wake up at the pearly gates. Or perhaps if it's you that's bought the EV just to save money and your family's now dead, you might not see your family again because you'll be going in different directions. You tight arse. So all these people in EVs that are driving around with bald tires with ply cord sticking out that don't believe in maintenance and servicing have got to check their electric charger every week. It's not going to happen, is it? Not going to happen at all. It just makes you wonder why they're investing all this money um, into <laughs> safety measures for EVs, doesn't it? You know, like inventing a battery that ejects out the EV. Makes you wonder why, if it never happens, doesn't it? If it's once every so often, I would take a chance. It might be somebody that we don't need in the future. It might be somebody who's not going to get on the spaceship to Mars when the comet's heading towards the Earth. So we probably don't need them anyway. Let's just, let's just examine it. Hey, here's your business daily. To prevent EV thermal runaway with blankets, 200 billion won in fiscal support needed. Hey Siri. Huh? How much is 200 billion won in Great British Pounds? 200 billion South Korean won is 103 million and four pounds and 31 pence. 103 million, thank you. So 103 million pounds in support needed. This is by Jun Youngju, 15th of November, 2025. NABO, NABO, focus reports by the Budget Office. Fire blankets to be provided at EV charging facilities. I wonder why? Because don't forget, most people have an EV charging facility up the drive, next to the house, underneath where the kids sleep, in the garage, their integral garage. Fire vulnerability of each charging station must be considered. As concerns grow over the fire risks associated with electric vehicles, there are increasing calls for countermeasures. According to recent estimates, equipping the battery charging stations with fire blankets to prevent large-scale incidents, such as thermal runaway, could require a budget of up to 200, well, 103 million pounds. Let's keep it in. Oh, nice pictures there of batteries. Cylindrical lithium battery causing thermal runaway. That's a picture. According to issue number 125 of NABO Focus, published by the National Assembly Budget Office on November the 15th, the additional fiscal expenditure required to mandate the installation of fire blankets at charging facilities is projected to range from a minimum of 38.2 billion won to a maximum of 214 billion won over the five year period from 2026 to 2030. The budget office assumed that fire blankets would be provided at electric vehicle charging stations managed by the central and local governments. And that in the case of apartment complexes, 60% of the purchase cost of the fire blankets would be subsidized according to the number of households. The unit price of a fire blanket was estimated to be in the three million one range. Hey Siri, how much is three million won in GB pounds? Okay, I found this on the web for how much is three million won in GB pounds. Check it out. One thousand five hundred sixty-one pounds forty-seven p. So that's how much each thermal blanket is. 
The number of electric vehicle charging stations has continued to increase from 2014 in 2016 to 447,768 as of last month. The number is expected to grow by 235 to 318 stations annually until 2030. Approximately 70% of charging facilities are installed in apartment complexes. <sighs> You are just asking for trouble. Furthermore, as concerns over electric vehicle battery fires have intensified, a total of 48 bills related to electric vehicle fire safety have been proposed in the 22nd National Assembly. These include bills to subsidise the installation of firefighting equipment at charging stations, add battery related items to electric vehicle safety assessments, mandate regular inspections of charging facilities and incorporate electric vehicle fire response into firefighter training because it never happens of course. Lee, Lee Mayeon an analyst at the Budget Office stated fiscal requirements will vary depending on the types of firefighting equipment mandated for charging facilities and the scope of eligible recipients for cost support. Therefore, it is necessary to devise measures that maximise effectiveness with limited budgets, she added. It is important to select the most cost-effective firefighting equipment for charging facility fires and to design detailed support schemes for installation costs taking into account the fire vulnerability of each location where charging facilities are installed. Oh, but it never happens. You know, Baz, stop, Baz, you EV liar, stop telling lies. Zurich Insurance. EV charging safety guidelines for best practice. Electric vehicle EVs are a common sight on our roads. As organisations embrace sustainability, many are installing EV chargers at their sites. While the benefits of electric vehicles are clear, charging them safely is a new area of risk for many operations. If you manage a facility or plan infrastructure, understanding best practices for EV charging safety is essential. The article sets out the key risks practical controls and emerging trends to give you a roadmap to safer, and more reliable EV charging. Why EV charging safety matters. EV chargers are high voltage appliances. They are designed to transfer large amounts of energy quickly and efficiently. Like any powerful electrical device, there are risks. Faults can happen, fires can start. Without the right controls, they could quickly become a hazard. Well, yeah, fires generally do become a hazard. That's why we have like firefighters. Lithium ion batteries, the heart of most electric vehicles, are generally safe, but under certain conditions they can fail. Physical impacts, extreme temperatures, charging malfunctions, or simply old age. Oh, but a battery lasts the life of an EV. What do you call old age? Batteries to overheat or catch fire. When a battery fails, it can release toxic or explosive gases. And because modern cars often contain a lot of plastic, fires can spread rapidly. The consequences are serious. Damage to property, business interruption, increased insurance premiums, and most importantly, risk to people. That's why robust safety measures are a must have. Location, location, location. Where you put your charging stations matters. Well, it does everywhere else in the world, but not in the UK, because in the UK, you can't have one at the Houses of Parliament, but you can have one underneath where 400 people live, and not just for one car, for charging electric buses. That's okay. The Labour Council approved that, but you can't have it under Parliament. God, it wouldn't, you know, it was November the 5th the other day, Guy Fawkes didn't succeed, but one halfwit charging his EV could burn down the Houses of Parliament. So they're not having that. Keep your distance. Ideally, charging stations should be at least 10 metres from buildings with combustible materials and 7.5 metres from non-combustible elevations. In tight spaces or residential areas, this might not be possible. That's okay, but make sure you carry out a site-specific risk assessment and consult with our risk engineering team for tailored advice. This is up your drive. We're now, again, with the Labour government, they've taken all the restrictions about planning permission and so on away, and you can just stick one anywhere. 
What could possibly go wrong? Control access. Use fencing or other barriers to prevent unauthorised access, especially in public areas. Space vehicles out for large commercial sites. Leave at least two metres between vehicles. You know on the charging thing where you like can't get out your car because they're that close together. Leave two metres. Numb skulls. In the event of a fire, this will slow the spread in smaller spaces. Again, a risk assessment by an expert is recommended. Well, I forget how many Teslas burnt the other day in, I think it was, was it the south of France? And how many Skoda vehicles burnt? Thir that was 39. I've not posted anything about those. The official fire investigation report hasn't been released yet. But the Tesla one, I did notice that they found a cut in the fence. So that could have been arson. People don't like Elon Musk for some reason. The Skoda one, there was a fish and chip van parked next door. Only the front of the fish and chip van is burnt, but all the Skodas in the compound are wiped out completely. There's no official cause of the fire, so, you know. But the thing is, once they catch fire, you can't put them out. That's, that's basically it, and that's what they're saying. Protect the chargers. Install barriers to stop vehicles from accidentally damaging the charging equipment. Plan for emergencies. Make sure fire services can easily get to the charging area. Risk controls what you need to do. To keep your EV charging station safe, you'll need a combination of good design, proper installation, ongoing maintenance and staff training. Here's what that looks like. Do you get your EV charger up your drive serviced every year? Checked out? Professional installation use only certified contractors, such as those accredited by NIC, EIC, ECA, SA, Fed, NAPIT, or Select. Follow manufacturer's guidelines and the IET code of practice for electric charging equipment installation. Electrical safety, install residual current devices, RCDs, so that power is automatically cut off if there's a fault. Automatic shutdown. Chargers should turn off automatically if there's a problem or if a fire alarm is triggered. Manual isolation. Make sure you have a manual isolation point to let you quickly disconnect a charger in an emergency. Keep clear of combustibles. Keep a two meter radius around chargers, free from waste, vegetation, and other flammable materials. Well, that's possibly all right if you live in a country home, but if you live in a house, on an estate, there is no way you will be able to have a two meter exclusion zone all the way around your vehicle while it's charging. No way at all. Cable management. Use cable holders to keep things tidy and reduce trip hazards. Regular maintenance. Schedule periodic checks by certified professionals. Daily visual checks by staff are also a good idea and weekly or monthly inspections should look for cracks or other damage to both the charger and its base. So all these people in EVs that are driving around with ball tires with ply cord sticking out that don't believe in maintenance and servicing have got to check their electric charger every week. It's not going to happen, is it? Not going to happen at all. Emergency planning. Develop a plan for what to do in the event of a charger or vehicle fire. Train your staff so they show Train your staff so they know how to isolate units, shut them down and implement your emergency procedures to keep people and other, to keep people and other assets safe. Avoid unattended charging. Avoid unattended charging. Try not to charge vehicles when no one is around to spot a problem. When are cheap EV tariffs, when there's somebody around to spot a problem or when all your family are in bed asleep, fast asleep, in the landing nod, no idea what's going on. Next thing, they wake up at the pearly gates. Or perhaps if it's you that's bought the EV just to save money and your family's now dead, you might not see your family again because you'll be going in different directions. You tight arse. Special considerations for enclosed spaces. Charging EVs in an enclosed area like underground car parks introduces extra risks 
Fires in these spaces can be harder to detect and fight. If you're planning to install chargers in these locations, get a detailed risk assessment from a qualified professional. Consider extra fire protection measures, such as sprinklers or fire suppression systems, and ensure, well, sprinklers don't put EV fires out, and ensure there's enough compartmentation to contain a blaze. Early detection is vital. Good fire alarms and sprinkler systems are your best allies. Not on ships, they're not. You're going down, mate. Keeping up with technology. The world of EV charging is evolving. Here are a few trends to keep an eye on. New systems use artificial intelligence to predict faults before they happen, alerting maintenance teams in advance. Renewable energy integration. More charging stations are using solar or wind power, cutting costs and promoting sustainability. Next generation charging. Wireless charging. Ultra fast chargers and better batteries are all on the horizon. These changes could affect both efficiency and safety, so stay up to date, but they won't affect efficiency and safety of the vehicles that are already on the road. Sometimes overlooked but important. Some risks aren't immediately obvious. Here are a few extras to consider. Cybersecurity. Modern chargers are smart. Regularly update software to prevent hacking and other issues. Because your charger can be hacked and you can hack it not to switch off and set it on fire. What if your house burns down and you haven't updated your software? Will your insurance pay out for your car, your charger and your house? And anybody who got cremated. Pets always seem to fare very badly in EV fires. Um, so, you know, Fido and uh, whatever you call your cat. Thermographic imaging uses technology to spot overheating before it becomes a problem. So you have to get a thermographic camera and sit there all night watching your EV and your charger while your family's asleep upstairs. It just gets stupider and stupider, this. Compliance, be aware of standards and stick to them, like the Institute of Engineering Technology Code of Practice and BS E961851-1, colon, 2019. Record keeping, log unscheduled downtime and keep good maintenance records. Local fire services, talk to them about charger placement, access and risk mitigation. Early conversations with your insurance provider during the design and positioning stages will lead to the best results and help avoid future issues early on. Quick reference tips. Facility managers, make sure charges are installed and maintained by certified professionals. Stay in close contact with your contractors. Safety officers, carry out regular inspections. Train staff on emergency and fire safety procedures. Maintenance staff, keep up with scheduled maintenance. Use thermographic imaging to catch overheating early. Conclusion. Safe EV charging isn't just about plugging in and walking away. It's about planning, vigilance and teamwork. By following these steps, you protect your people, your property and your investment in a sustainable future. Early consultation with insurance and fire services, along with regular training and maintenance, will ensure your EV charging stations remain an asset rather than a liability. Stay safe, stay charged and drive into the future with confidence. For tailored advice, consult Zurich's risk engineering team. So if I can understand that properly, when these EV drivers say, how big's your bladder? Do you never want to go for a wee? I can go for a wee and a cup of coffee while my EV's charging, come back. and Well, you can't, can you? Because according to this, you should sit and watch your EV charging, wait till it's finished, unplug it, park it away from all the other vehicles and then go for a wee and a cup of coffee. So yet again, you just have to laugh or you'd cry. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.